Well, I think I'm as excited to learn about these as some of the viewers are going to be. After the overview on the PNI 8000 series, one or two comments and emails when you're going to do the technical side. So we're going to do that today. And we're going to do all three sets. I'll tell you what we need to do. I need to get a marker pen and I need to put somewhere on a screen what model each is. So I will pause the video. There we go, back to record. So this is the 8000 model. There's the 8001. And there's the 8024. So what's the difference? Well, on the 8001, you get this Kenwood type socket, is what they actually say, where you've got a three and a half and two and a half mil, and they sell a Bluetooth dongle which plugs into there for about 20 pounds which gives it Bluetooth. The 8024 is practically the same as this, as the 8000, but it has an extra circuit here, which is a 24 volt regulator. So it's 12, 24 volt, doesn't care. That's what the difference is. So in recent weeks, I've done the Moonraker Minor. Mark II Plus, or whatever it was called. And it had the disappointing RF gain control, which only worked on AM, and it had the disappointing CPU noise. And it shares its chassis with others, is the Luton and uh, one of the Thunderpole sets. So we've got this extra knob again, which says ASQ. Huh? I think I better get the instruction book out. Now it's Easter Sunday morning that I'm recording this, 2020, in the, main, in the middle of this coronavirus lockdown here in the UK. And of course it's very serious. And as I've said before, Mr. Mr. Chip, who normally comes here at weekends, he has a, a day job at his home 94 miles away. He got stuck here and he felt he would be better off here in the middle of nowhere and at least he can play electronics on the various the benches and facilities we've got here than be sat at home uh, with little else to do but watch the telly. So, um, you know, we've been here together and when I did the Nissan Leaf as a test vehicle, he sneaked up with the camcorder and did 45 seconds of, of bird chirping uh, in the garden because uh, we were wondering where the QRM was coming from. And it struck me with it being Easter Sunday, and leave a comment. My main job's as a church organist, and I've done that 40 years. This is the first Sunday in 40 years that I haven't played the organ at at least one, if not three churches. But we have our own pipe organ here at Tango Towers. It's an 1877 Conacher, all tracker, mechanical action and weighing in at four tons. If you want a 30 second interlude of me playing the Tango Towers Konica pipe organ, say so in the comments. And if you don't, say so in the comments because we could do that on the next video. But I promise you, it would only be 30 seconds because this channel is not about, certainly not about me, and it's not about church organs. So I'm just gonna get the instruction book and we'll just see what that knob is supposed to do. Okay, well it gets more bizarre by the moment, this. <laughs> so, control knob number four is the squelch control. And it says, potentiometer for squelch adjustment. The squelch makes your noise, your radio quieter by removing the background noise. Rotate this potentiometer clockwise to reduce the noise, or counterclockwise if you want to hear even the weakest stations, which is fair enough better than the one on the uh, PT-40, Braemar PT-40 back in 1981, which says, be pleased to adjust this control uh, for the best phase Changri qualitative. So, ch knob number five, ASQ potentiometer. To increase the ASQ level, 
rotate the potentiometer clockwise. In this case, a reduction, this reduces the background noise, but also signal level received. So it has ASQ on the mic, so you've basically got a squelch knob to fiddle with and a squelch knob to preset. Oh, I've not seen that before. Oh, it's better than a dodgy RF, contro RF gain control. So the difference, they are basically the same chassis as the Luton and the uh, Moonraker Minor 2 Turbo or whatever. But, oops, they're not because there are no coils to adjust. If I look at the notes, the scribbles I made, it's come out of the same factory, it's basically the same layout. You've got a modulation transformer in the same place, you've got a relay in the same place, you've got one or two things in the same place. The audio amp's in the same place. But on the Moonraker, it's got all these adjustments for the receiver. It doesn't have any for the transmitter, but it has coils, transformers for the receiver. This is clearly later, and they've eliminated that by sticking it all in chips. So we're down to five adjustments. Got one down there, one there, three, four, five. So we're going to find out what they are, aren't we? And you can hear this receiving at 0.3 of a microphone. I mean, the radio I just did last was a Uniden 100. It's working great. But where that had stopped receiving, this still is receiving. That's 0.3 of a microvolt. 0.25, 0.2, 0.15. The squelch has come in. That's interesting. So yeah, it's cute. 1.5, 0.1, 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, 0.5, 0.6, 0.7, 0.8, 0.9, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16, 0.17, 0.18, 0
Good grief. We don't often see that, do we? A CB doing five, six, seven watts. Will they get turned that down before the government officials come out of lockdown to nick me? I very rarely see that. So there we are, set at four watts, which is better than it coming out of the box at two and a half, as it does. So we'll be interested to see how the other one does. So I'll make a note on my little sheet here that that one is TX power. So we've solved that mystery. So is the power meter adjustable? And was it on the was it on the other one? I'll tell you what we're going to do next. If that's not if that isn't power, I just now suspect that it's deviation, which of course I've upset. So let's have a look. Oscillator on. Key the mic up. And we've got one point seven which is about what you'd expect on a new set. Bah, so that is it, that is deviation. So I can turn that down, I can turn it up. So I've got that out at full, and let's just see what a whistle test does. <sighs> Wallow, that brings it to about where we want. So I've had to turn that to full, but that stops people turning them into radios that transmit on three channels at once. So it is it is okay that, but it's at full, so I'll make a note on our sheet. Now one of these is going to be AM modulation, because the radio does have AM, hence the modulation transformer there. Um, so what shall we look for next? I think we'll look for that. It's a bit of a faff because I'm going to have to go out of uh, uh, UK and into CE. So I have to get the instruction book out and see what I need to set this to. So it turns out it, the display dis say it says G when it's in the CPT mode, which allows AM and FM. So I'll switch it on. Switch to FM. Switch to AM. Display doesn't move at all. <laughs> I'll simulate it by putting it back into uh, program mode. So there you are, it says blank G. How bizarre. So now we can have a look at the AM modulation. Switch the test set to AM. Key up. Wallow. <whistles> Wallow. So, I'll get the oscillator back because it's easy to do like that. So it's set right, it's doing 90%. So we'll just have a fiddle. So, is it that one? Yes, it is. With it being round the audio stage, I thought it could be, and it is. We don't have to do a hundred percent, or we will end up splattering. Set it back to about there. Wallow, excellent. So I'll now make a note that that 
is a um, mod. We'll reprogram it now for UK. So PTT, the down button, switch it on. You switch it off, switch it on, and in AM it's CPT channels, and I'll just key up uh, and tell you that it's what the frequency says when I get to channel twenty. Twenty-seven two oh five oh eight. So it is on frequency, and I says nothing. We can. I don't think there's anything we can do about it. Looking at the way it is. Um, switch it to FM, brings it into UK, so it should be 27.79.125. Actually, that isn't brilliant, it's 79008. That, I think, is noticeably off frequency. Oh dear. It's within tolerance, but it's not ideal. So it's kind of UK as an also run. And CEPT is priority the way I see that. So that leaves us with two presets. The one down at the bottom and the one over there. Now I'm not expecting the TX power meter to be one of those, but I will just key up just in case. Same applies to that one down at the bottom. No. So, we'll go over to receive and we'll see if one of them's the S meter. It's always possible. So, I'm feeding an S9 signal into the radio. We'll turn that camera off. And the meter is saying S2, so that means I probably disturbed it. So that preset at the bottom isn't it. And that preset there also isn't it. Okay, so you've got a lazy meter. Let's turn up the signal generator. Because they're not labelled, are they? It just says 1, 2, 3 and 4. It doesn't correspond to anything. That's a plus 30 signal. And that's a plus a bit more signal. So, it, yes, it works, but it's not uh, adjustable. Okay, so I've had a look of, at this between behind the scenes. And it apparently appears to me that the preset down here affects mic gain. Whether or not it is part of the other set, which has got the dongle facility, the 8001, and it just happens to be in all of them, I don't know. And the preset to the right there, if you remember the transmit power was that one, that also affects transmit power. And I just wonder if this is a throwback to when Germany were allowed and other countries were allowed one watt on some frequencies and, and four watts on another. Anyway, I've set it for the power for four watts. We've set the deviation and the modulation. And the meter both for transmit and receive has no adjustment whatsoever. There's no squelch preset, but you have auto squelch on this knob and you have normal squelch on that knob. So... The L position is lock. I half expected a channel 9 switch, but it actually locks, which is fair enough. So normal channels, channel 19, 
and there we have it. So that's the 8000. So moving on to the 8024 model and competing with Radio 4, which has just come on the background music system, we have transmit power on this one as it's come out of the box of again two and a half watts. So hopefully we can pop that up to four watts with the left hand adjustment there. Now that one doesn't come up to four watts. So let's do it with the other one as well. So there we are. With manipulating the two, we've got four watts. I don't think the meter means anything. I've turned these down to absolutely no watts at all and it still reads all of them. It's just a glorified TX light. Deviation. So... We're looking at that one for deviation, and it had to be full last time. Wallow, that's absolutely fine. I'm not touching AM modulation, it's, it was spot on on the other one. And these are for us anyway, for our evaluation. I'm not going to touch that, whatever it is. A thing to mention is the board has the E246715 on the printer circuit board. It also says 2019-0417 as a date code. So that looks like April the 17th last year. So they are pretty recent. Um, so if anybody has a circuit diagram or knows what factory these came out of, it's not like the old days where you said, oh, it's a Uniden such and such board and it's a Maxon such and such board. I just don't know where they're coming from. But I thought we'd have seen them before, but I haven't. And finally, the 8001 model. So... Transmit, we'll go over to channel 20. This is the one you can plug the dongle in. So it's come out of the box reading two and a half watts. Oh, I'm on, I'm on 20. Oh, well, that's a bit off frequency. CPT channel tw uh, 20 it should be 27205 it's 20487 it's within tolerance but with it being unadjustable it's disappointing okay so let's just turn the power up so there we go to 4 watts And we'll just set the deviation the same. Probably to probably to full again. So just over one. Walo testing. Yep, that's fine. That's two point two. And the receive. Just, just the same, less than 0.1 of a microvolt. Fantastic. So, 
Oh, I know what we're going to look for. Whether it has a CPU noise. So I've now put an S9 signal on. And on this one, we actually get three lights. Do you remember we got two on the first one? So there's a bit of a tolerance which you'd expect. I prefer it to read there on uh, S9. So I'm going to switch the modulation off or deviation, the audio. Turn the volume to full. There's no whine. Excellent. So that's it. That's all I can say. I can't. See, I've not seen them before. It's clearly out of the same factory as I say. It's the Moonraker Minor Two. Perhaps somebody who uh, has more in, uh, is more privy to service manuals will, will tell me. And you've got this subboard on this one, which goes through to that socket for your dongle. So I'll just plug one of these into the aerial and we'll see if we can hear anyone. So I've switched it to 19. There's somebody at the back of the box. Probably 35 miles away at Nottingham. So I'll have a flip round, I'll use the mic. Okay, so somebody out there. So I like it better than the Moonraker Minor 2 because you've now not got a silly RF gain control and you've got rid of the wine. It's a different set, it's just going to be a similar circuit. But I don't know. I'd like to see a circuit diagram and then we could verify why we've got two power uh, adjustments and, and uh, what that really is down there. So, I'll look forward to doing an on-the-air de test with all three of these. And I'll say stay safe and thank you for watching.